Christ the King Lutheran Church. We welcome the guests and visitors that are here with us today. Uh, I was gone last week uh, just to quarantine. I'm healthy. Nothing seems to be wrong uh, more than usual. Um, but I've already been approached by two or three people today saying that we had a short service last week, so I do not have permission to have extra time this week. <laughs> if you think of me, right? <laughs> All right. Well, well, we are here, and we are here to receive the Lord's blessings in word and sacrament. So we begin with our first hymn, hymn number 869. Please rise. Stand. But with you there is forgiveness, 
therefore you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Behold, the children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb from the Lord. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the day. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. reading for the 19th Sunday after Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 2. Then the Lord, Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up his place with flesh. And the, and the rib that, Lord, that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 2. Therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was, it was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard, while God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Now it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere. What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor, putting everything in sub subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside his control. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him, but we see him for, but we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, should, be, should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one origin. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation I will sing your praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children God has given me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Mm -hmm.
Mark, the tenth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Mark writes, Pharisees came up and in order to test Jesus, asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to send her away. And Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore, a man, man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let man not separate. And in the house the disciples asked him again about this matter. And he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our common Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We sing hymn number 
Jesus Christ. Our sermon text for today is from our gospel lesson of Mark 10. It's a troublesome lesson. And I didn't think I could easily preach on Hebrews and just uh, talk about the wonderfulness of Jesus without acknowledging this, these words that come from Jesus that may be very troublesome to us in our world. Let the children come to me. No, uh, we know that. We have that a little bit easier, but we struggle with this first part about divorce. And first, I am not out to get any of you. We have all been touched by this. We all live in a culture that lives with this. And so let's just try to wrestle with this text a little bit. It's okay to say, Lord, what are you saying in this? How am I to understand it? And the first thing we need to see here is it's the Pharisees' fault, okay? Right there, let's make it easier for us. They come with the question, and they come with the question with a, a, a sinful motive in order to test him, in order to trap him, in order to see if they can uh, you know, find some more meat for the grinder to, to get Jesus. They are seeking a division already with Jesus. And, and this uh, division's uh, happen. I found this wonderful quote. It said, divisions happen when love leaves a relationship and hate or indifference enters in to fill the void. Now, if you go with that definition, what has already happened between the Pharisees and Jesus is nothing new in Mark chapter 10. Already in Mark chapter 2, they are wanting to know how Jesus can dare heal and how Jesus can dare forgive sins. Who is he? Already in Mark chapter 3, we see that they are seeking to destroy Jesus. It's the very word that's used there in Mark. Destroy. Not get rid of, not replace, not you know discredit him. They want to destroy Jesus. Their attacks, their struggles with Jesus continue through Mark, and you see it in the other Gospels as well. And so it's nothing new, the division that has already been happening, that they are seeking the Pharisees between them and Jesus to, to find out a way not to draw closer, to understand, not to say, how can we get him, maybe even to come alongside us, but to divide. And so the Pharisees ask this question. In order to put Jesus to the test, in order to test him, is it lawful for a man to divorce? Lawful. That is one of the first words there. Is it lawful? Can we be justified? Can we be self-justified in seeking this? And, and Jesus' answer is really more important. We don't know exactly what they thought their train of thought was, what their strategy was. We're not told that they think if he says this, we got him one way. If he says that, we got him another way. We're not given up. Look into the mind of the Pharisees. We just know their words. What can we do about divorce, Jesus? Is it, is it lawful? But what's more important is Jesus' answer. So he does say, well, what, what did Moses say? What's in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 24? What did Moses say about this? And most, they say, well, Moses allowed us. We could write this certificate of divorce. Jesus' answer is more important. That's because of sin. That's because of the hardness of the human heart that this was allowed. Do you see what's happening here? Is, is he's acknowledging this was never God's place and God's desire at the beginning. He says, at the beginning... God made them male and female. God desired unity. But these divorces that Jesus is speaking of happen when things are so broken. Maybe when we think of the divorces we know or have lived with or have been through, maybe we say it was absolutely needed. Maybe we say Looking back, 
maybe it didn't need to have happened. I will not speak to your circumstances because the trap is already set by the Pharisees. It's already, you know, in the discussion of debates, it's already a poison discussion because of the trap that's already being set. And Jesus is really here trying to redirect. So let's not talk about what is lawful for the Pharisees. I'm not going to try to uh, just hold on here. All right, hold on. Here. Yeah, we, in, in seeing this, they want to know what can we be justified to do? Can we, can we seek this divorce in this way? Now, Scripture is clear that there are times when a divorce is okay. It, okay, it needs to happen, right? There are times when a divorce is allowable. And Scripture is clear that there are times where we seek to live in it and through it, where we seek to find reconciliation, where we seek to strengthen a relationship, where we seek those things. But what they want to know is not what's the best way, but can I get a, a stamp on my uh, certificate here? Can I get God's seal of approval on this? Is it lawful to create this division? And what Jesus' answer is, is really let's not talk about the legalities. What does God fully want? And he, he creates a world way from the beginning, right? Jesus says from the beginning, which draws us back to our Old Testament lesson, Genesis 2. God created a world where man and woman would be together. Man and woman, right? One male, one female. Okay, we got that stated. But where there was unity, not division. God created a world where they came together and there was unity, even to call it one flesh. And that is the desire, and that is the good design of God's world. And sadly, in our world, we live with brokenness. Sometimes these things break, and sometimes we're the one who broke them. Or sometimes we don't know how to stop it from breaking. We just don't know what's going on next. And sometimes we say, I don't think I'm doing what God wants, but I don't know what to do. And, right? We've all been through these struggles. And, and in marriage, we come back and we hear Jesus saying, there is this desire from God for unity. So therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. The encouragement there is not to seek the division, but to seek the unity. To seek and encur the encouragement there for us not to validate, to get an always okie dokie to create a division. But Jesus desires to say, how can we work towards unity? How can we seek unity? to save this in many ways, right? And this is a, a, a problem that's not just endemic in, in divorce. This is a problem that works its way throughout all of our society because it's in our hearts that tries to create divisions. Whereas God has created marriage, he encourages us to not divide that, but to stay. He encourages us to find ways to, to look for unity. Whereas God has created family, God encourages us not to divide that. The, the Pharisees could very easily have said, hey, can I divorce my family? Can I separate all legal obligations with my family? Can I walk away from parent or brother or child and say, I'm done with you? God has put us together in family. And his desire would be for us to not separate but to stay in that unity of creation. God is the one who put me with my parents. God is the one who put me in my family with brothers. God is the one who brings us into the families we have. And any failure, any brokenness, any division, any strife that we know can sometimes happen, it is not of God's doing but of the brokenness of humanity. We love the idea of marriage. We love the idea of family. We love these ideas still in our society. And yet where do we find that the biggest heartaches can come in our hearts and in our lives? Family, at times. At times we find ourselves fighting over right or fighting over rights. Who's right? Fighting over freedoms, fighting over desires, fighting over properties and inheritances, fighting over you hurt me and I can't let it go, fighting over 
this is not good. Finding ourselves struggling. And God encourages unity and not division. Where else does this happen? This happens in the church. God has brought us together, even as this congregation, as this gathering here today. And the Pharisees could very easily have said, can I just let it go? Can I just be a Lone Ranger Christian? Can I seek a, a certificate of divorce from my church? Right? Can, can I just walk away from all of you guys? God has brought us together. Not to say, I'm going to seek a self-justifying reason to divorce myself from the church or any Christians. But God calls us together to see that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And our unity has been promised for an eternity. And so we begin living that life, that eternal life together now. If, if you have not been in a situation where Christians are divided against each, each other, give thanks. If, if you have, then you know how hard it is when fellow Christians cannot regard each other in love. Where else does this happen? When God brings us into unity with him in Jesus Christ. God has brought us together. The Holy Spirit has brought us to faith in Jesus Christ. And we are even told in scripture that we are united to Christ. Romans 6 would tell us that in our baptism, we are united to Christ in his death so that we will also be united with Christ in his resurrection. We are united with Christ and we can't say like many of the Pharisees said in the scriptures, I'm going to be divorced from Jesus. I will have no connection with him. I want to seek a division from Jesus and not a unity. That is what many of the Pharisees eventually continued to say, I want no part with this God if it's found in Jesus Christ. Give thanks that our Lord seeks unity. Give thanks that our Lord seeks to bring you to him. He could very easily say, you have failed me and I'll have no part with you. But he says, you have failed and you have sinned and I will give my son to keep you in the family. I will give him as the sacrifice. I will give him as the judgment for as the one who bears the judgment for sin so that you can receive the forgiveness and unity with God and reconciliation with God through Christ. What good news that we are not divided from Christ, but he continues with every sin we do to forgive and still call us back to him. What good news when in the old or in the New Testament later on the disciples were saying, No, no kids with Jesus. Don't let the kids come to Jesus. That Jesus made it very clear. Bring them. Let them come. What are considered in that time often to be the least, less important, most annoying part of society, those who have nothing to contribute, where we would see in our culture, we talk very much about what a treasure the children are. But at that time, when they see the least of these, Jesus says, I want those with me, even the least of these. Where we, at times, may feel like we have been those involved in a division of family, in, in a destruction of a, of a marriage or a relationship. And Jesus Christ says, I want the least of these to come to me. The Old Testament we would use the phrase that a bruised reed he will not break. He'll restore. He'll take it. Those when we might feel like we are the least of these because our marriage has failed, because our family is divided, Jesus will say, let them come, the least of these. Let the children of God come and be with me, Jesus Christ. When he sees that our families have, have broken and fractured or are troubled or we have been uh, separated by any, any amount of trouble, Jesus still calls us and says, I want even those who think they are the least or the greatest failures or those with the most shame to come and know of the unity and reconciliation there is through me, Jesus Christ. When he sees a church divided, he still says, dear Christians, come to me and find your unity with one another through Christ. Come and be united to Christ. The question here is really, it doesn't have to be about divorce. But they brought it up, 
And Jesus has to answer and say, yeah, it's awful, isn't it? It's what no one really wants, isn't it? It creates all sorts of hard situations, doesn't it? Sometimes it happens. And come to me in Christ and let the blood of Christ be forgiveness for all of it. When a family is struggling or is divided, let the blood of Christ be forgiveness for all of it. When Christians are divided, when we feel divided from Christ himself, let the blood of Christ wash it away and find our unity with Christ, with our Heavenly Father, and with one another in Christ. They may want to say, it's okay to make divisions, right? We may say sometimes it's necessary, but let's let everything be covered in the blood of Christ. Let's let unity be found in Christ. And through Christ, let's find ways to build unity, to seek encouragement, to find, to stay together and build the, the conditions of love in Christ, in, in family, in, in church, in, in society, and, and with our relationship with Christ. Let's see his love for us and see ways that we also then seek to encourage and build that in our outward relationships with others. We are actually not divided. In Christ, we are brought to him, and we are forgiven for every division we have made. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue now on page 8 in our worship folder with the prayer of the church. Please rise. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. <coughs> Lord God, help us by your spirit to receive your kingdom in humble repentance like little children, that we may enter it in the joy of your forgiveness in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that we may pay closer attention to your word, lest we drift away from it and neglect the great salvation it reveals to us in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, in a reflection of your eternal love, you join man and woman together so that they are no longer two, but one flesh. Bless the engaged, the newly married, and those who have shared many years together with even more of your love, that they may live together in it with joy th their whole lives long. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, help all parents who have brought their children to Christ in the waters of holy baptism. Also bring them to him faithfully in the divine service, that he may continue to take them in his arms and bless them through his word. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray that you would comfort Spike, Lisa, Dave, Roland, and Dave, Jim, Barbara, Isabel, Roma and Buck, Ruth, Charlie, Chris, Lorea, and Scott, Kathy, Kathy, Angela, Susan, and Blaine, Marjorie, Darlene, Barbara, and the wife of Jonathan, and all others who suffer in body or mind. You made the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering, that in all their trials they may put their trust in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now as we receive the offering.
continue on page 8 with the preface. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
We continue on page 14 with the Nunc Dimittis. Please rise.
the King Lutheran Church. Welcome also to our guests and visit visitors that are here with us today. Um, I'd like to say a few things, uh, drawing also into the announcements. But before the announcements, I want to thank Charlie for being able to help uh, last week. Uh, you all gave him applause. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good support. Uh, you don't applaud me, <laughs> but you pay me. So, all right. so, uh, and I want to thank Charlie and Dave as, as for all their help as elders. I want to thank everyone who serves. Uh, and, I, and, and if if you if I haven't if I don't list something that you do, please forgive me. But to everyone who contributes to this church uh, in service or time or helping the the worship service or helping with the facilities. Uh, it is deeply appreciated, uh, at least by me, if no one else. Uh, I, thank you so much. There's no way I could do all of this, and especially when when I'm weak or I have to be cautious, I'm not here. Thank you guys for filling in as well. Uh, to direct our attention to the announcement pages, uh, 15, 16 and 17, uh, again, this, this Bible study, which we've been uh, promoting, um, it is a book study, and there's a book up there and a sign-up sheet if you want. Will the real Jesus please stand up? And, and so it's taking a look at some false ideas we have of Christianity or Jesus and then addressing them with, well, what is the real Jesus doing and what does he want? Uh, so you're invited to come to that. If, you're, if you want the audio book, there's also the thing in here about how to get the audio book through the library app on your cordless device or whatever. Uh, if you admit to yourself, I'm not going to read the book, but you want to come on Wednesdays uh, for the discussion and it will get into the scripture or for the meal that I gather is are being provided, uh, feel free to come on Wednesdays for that. Um, so there's that on, on uh, the, the book study uh, coming up on Wednesdays. A uh, few other things just to highlight. Uh, there's no confirmation class today. It's going to be canceled for today. Church council meets tomorrow. Uh, right, Charlie? Elders. Uh, elders tomorrow. All right, it's, it's the first week. First week I'm off. All right, so elders meet tomorrow. Uh, and uh, is there anything else that anybody wants to say? Or any other comments? Going once, going, okay. Um, we invite you to stay for the, the goodies, for the fellowship uh, that you have with one another. Uh, and uh, get to know someone. And, like, if you don't know someone, just introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Joe. Or whatever uh, that would be uh, helpful because we are the body of Christ we've been brought together and, and uh, go ahead and, and uh, help that and encourage that by getting to know one another God's blessings on your day and your week Amen.